today as you need to lay down. If you like tear down videos, then this video is the one for you. I have uh, six or seven flat screen televisions to tear down. We're going to be looking at three types of televisions in this video. The LED backlit LCD like this one, the cold cathode fluorescent backlight style of LCD TV, and we have a plasma screen that we're going to be taking a look at. I'm going to be starting with this 32 inch insignia and I'll be working my way up in size from there. And if you're like me, I know that you care about what's inside of TV more than what's on TV. So let's get to it. Here I have the 32 inch insignia and not too much going on on the inside of it as I suspected. So I've got a one board solution here. Uh, I got the power supply side and got the digital side. A uh, little class the amplifier and chip section here. And uh, looks to be a single chip solution for the USB and the uh, driving of the LCD panel here. So pretty basic board. I'm going to go over this board a little bit in general uh, just on some of the various basic parts so that way it uh, doesn't get overwhelming for those who don't know that much about electronics as I progress on to the bigger TVs. So right here uh, power supply board main board combination got a TCOM board right here and uh, two little really bad speakers and uh, then the user interface with the buttons. Uh, on the other side of the panel, got a crack screen. All of these have crack screens, by the way. So none of these screens are salvageable. They're all scrap. And uh, we can see the LEDs and stuff like that on uh, the inside of the panel. So let's uh, pull this board out, pull the T-Con out, and uh, see what else is inside this uh, TV. Here's the combination power supply logic board that's been pulled from the 32-inch Insignia LCD TV. And it's a fairly common setup to what you'll find in a lot of consumer TVs today. What I want to do with this is I want to go over some of the uh, more common components on the board and tell you a little bit about how they work so I don't have to go through how they work on the more complicated TVs. Me, I'm more so concerned about the fun, uh, odd bits on the inside, not so much the ones that you normally find. Now let's go over the board. Uh, the AC power comes in here. You'll notice there's only two pins, so there's not the third pin for earth ground, which yeah, in this case is okay. Uh, here we have a little fuse, which is usually the last thing to go on your TV, uh, followed up by a positive temperature coefficient thermistor. Basically what this does is uh, if something in your TV is pulling too much power or if there's a short or something's failing like a capacitor is taking more energy than it should, this will heat up, and when it heats up, it drops in conductivity. Uh, after that, we have a Class X capacitor. We can tell that it's a Class X capacitor because it goes over the, uh, the neutral and the live. And uh, after that, we have two common mode chokes. Now, common mode chokes work. Because if you were to think about uh, two gears that are linked together, uh, they can both go like this. Uh, but if you try to uh, spin them both going uh, both clockwise, neither of them want to spin clockwise and uh, that's kind of how these guys neutralize spikes in uh, the line both going in and out of the board basically it just does this with magnetics then we have the two class Y capacitors and uh, one of these is tied to live one of these is tied to neutral and uh, they both go to the ground plane of the whole board from there we have four Schottky diodes and uh, these are the full bridge rectifying section and what they do is they take the AC and they convert it over to the DC and then uh, charge this large capacitor here. Uh, this capacitor holds about 170 volts when it's plugged into a regular 120 AC outlet. And uh, what that does is uh, it gets switched on and off by the MOSFET underneath this little heat sink. So this gets charged and uh, this will switch on and off the power from that capacitor to this transformer here. You notice on this side there are a few thinner wires as compared to these wires. So this is a high side. We have more voltage coming in with less current. And on this side we have more current with less voltage. From here we have a few larger diodes. And uh, what these do is they turn that AC into DC and charge up these capacitors here. We have a little transformer here and that's for driving the backlit LEDs. And uh, the rest of these will just be for controlling uh, the different uh, powers on the logic side of the board. Here is the uh, power supply control chip. So basically, uh, this controls everything. Uh, basically, controls this little uh, optocoupler, which controls the MOSFET and 
how many times it pulses the transformer for the power required. So over there we have uh, the LVDS connection. This goes to the liquid crystal screen display. And then we have an all-in-one custom IC that handles uh, the HDMI and the sound and uh, all the other uh, inputs. Uh, basically it's an all-in-one chip that does everything. It's pretty simple. Uh, here we have uh, the audio and uh, the RCA inputs. And uh, we have one little chip right here. This is uh, the digital audio chip and uh, the capacitors for driving that. These inductors are also part of the uh, audio amplifier circuit, and then we have the output for the speakers here. We have the uh, front remote and uh, LED indicators for the LED here, and uh, this is for the side switches. I'll talk a little bit more about how those work, but not all too much going on on this board. This is another fairly common board that you'll find in a lot of flat panel displays. It's called a TCOM board, and it has a fairly simple job. So what it does is it takes all of these signals and power that are coming out of the LVDS connector and it conditions it for the actual LCD panel. So it conditions both the power and it conditions the signal. Now its primary job is to take a few really fast signals and turn those really fast signals into a whole bunch of slower moving signals. And these signals are what actually runs the LCD panel itself. Here's the switch module, and if you've ever wondered how they can get so many switches running with so few wires, it's actually a pretty simple and clever solution. So if you'll notice back here, each switch is in series with a resistor. So we got these little resistors right here. And uh, how it works is the TV sends a little bit of power up through here, and it measures the continuity of those resistors. So figure it like this, 10K. 20K, 30K, 40K, 50K, 60K, 70K. Pretty simple to understand. And if we take a look at the bottom, we can see that there's just seven 5mm tactile push button switches. So this little board is pretty simple. It only does two things. Uh, the first thing it does is it uh, picks up the remote control signal with these two little phototransistors. And uh, then there's a little LED right here for indicating whether the TV is on or not. So aside from that, that doesn't do much. Some other miscellaneous things found inside of the TV include two really terrible speakers and a few wires, most notably the LVDS wire. And these are great wires to have around if you're someone who does uh, really tiny projects. Uh, the wires come in a lot of different colors as well. It's always good to have thin wire of various colors for various projects. Keep the LVDS cable. You'll thank me. And now for my favorite part, getting into the actual screen itself and uh, seeing what's inside. So we have a broken LCD panel. Yummy. After that, uh, there's this little plastic clip bracket that kind of holds everything together. And then we have the refracting sheets. So we have uh, an X refractor and we have a Y refractor, although these uh, don't seem to be the best quality. Uh, after that we should have a uh, piece of uh, diffusing material, which is uh, this piece of plastic here. And uh, then the actual LEDs themselves. I'm going to pull out the LED strips, see what kind of LED strips we get. These are the three LED strips that were pulled out of the TV. Each strip has seven LEDs and uh, run at about 22 volts. Mmm, LEDs. That's the stuff that I live for. Look at that. Mmm, delicious. Next TV. Our next TV is a 26 inch CCFL backlit Senyo. That's uh, not a wider TV. It's a bigger TV. Uh, hopefully there'll be some good parts in here. Uh, CCFL backlit TVs usually have some nice transformers and stuff. Looks like what we have inside of here is a separate power supply unit. That'll be nice because I definitely like using those power supply units. And uh, then we have the everything else board which controls the, uh, the screen itself and uh, also controls things like uh, the sound and other what goodies. 
So I'm going to take out the boards and I'm going to take off the rest of the plastic. We can take a look at these both in detail. Time to take a look at the Sanyo board and you'll notice a lot of the same components and arrangement. So we got the line in. We got uh, two class Y capacitors here. Uh, looks like we have a fuse here, a fusible resistor here, another fuse here. This looks like it's a class X capacitor and uh, we have three common mode chokes and uh, two more class X capacitors. So that's all the AC filtering. And then we have the full bridge rectifier which takes the AC, converts it over to DC as a positive and there's a negative and uh, that DC charges up this capacitor here and the energy in this capacitor gets switched by these two MOSFETs here and here. Now this little MOSFET uh, controls the transformer right here. Got uh, two opto isolators for the low side and the high side for controlling the uh, MOSFETs. We got another optocoupler here. This is a nice beefy transformer. Uh, looks to be a 150 200 watt capable transformer. Got some really heavy uh, primary wiring. That looks really good. That could be actually, I think that's secondary. Um, and uh, that transformer feeds energy to these three diodes right here. This diode, it uh, takes the AC from one of the transformer lines here converts it over to DC and uh, that charges up these capacitors which provides the 24 volt power rail for the cold cathode fluorescent driver. On this side it's uh, pretty simple got two more diodes here got a couple of more diodes in this location and uh, that is all for providing the different power rails so we got a 12 volt a 24 volt uh, 5 volt and uh, probably a standby power rail and uh, that's what all this is for so takes the energy from here and from here. These diodes turn it from AC to DC, store the power and provides it to the logic board. Take a look at the other side of it. We got a couple of other uh, semiconductor components. Uh, this is probably the main power supply drive IC. And uh, these are probably uh, other uh, power supply switching ICs for various power rails. That's a nice power supply. It's definitely one that has a lot of uh, current output. Probably going to be fun to put in something and run with it. That's a nice power supply. Before I get into showing you the logic board, I'm going to have to take this whole shielding off the main processor and uh, desolder this bottom bracket. But first, an ADD test. Yeah, you heard it too, didn't you? This is the Sanyo logic board. Doesn't look like there's too much going on here. Most notably, got the Zoran Super HD LCD controller. Uh, looks like we have some flash memory here and uh, some RAM for that chip. Maybe a little uh, regulating component here for power. I don't know what this is. It uh, looks like it could be tied to something up here. So it's not as busy as it could be, but uh. I might look up the data sheet for this and quickly throw it up uh, on in text format. This right here is the uh, digital amplifier section right here. We can uh, tell that easily because it has the uh, four inductors again, as well as a big cap for pushing the power through and uh, the speaker output. Got a uh, couple of components here as well. Another regulator of some sort and uh, to be a couple of inductors. And uh, the capacitors for uh, smoothing the power coming from the power supply. This little header right here is for the um, I.O. So with, uh, for the remote control and for the power on indicator uh, in the front of the LCD. And uh, then we got the LVDS connector right here. And that's pretty nice LVDS too. Has lots of colors. Flip it over see if there's anything uh, all too exciting. Uh, I don't think so. Let's see. Wait, hold on. Uh huh. This chip might be for VGA. Might. Not sure. But it does look like it uh, 
follows through that area, so that might be a VGA chip. Yeah, pretty uh, generic board as well. Not too much going on. On to the CCFL inverter board, one of my favorite boards. Under this black bracket is the CCFL inverter. And uh, CCFL is cold cathode fluorescent. It's those fluorescent tubes inside of the TV, and this provides the high voltage for everything. So how this works is it uh, takes in the 24 volts through this wire right here and uh, charges up these two capacitors and the power is switched with these MOSFETs here to all of these little transformers that provide the high voltage. So on each one of these guys, 24 volts in, uh, and about what 2000 volts out, depends on the length of the tube. Uh, these four wires right here, uh, two of them are for the brightness control and two of them are for the uh, error reporting from this board back out to the logic board. And uh, just like a power supply board, we have the uh, IC here, the switch mode power IC, and a couple of other ICs for uh, various things. This looks like we got a couple of transistor totems for uh, controlling the MOSFET. Mmm, yummy. So these are nice little transformers for projects, nice little high voltage uh, guys, and uh, this should uh, slide out no problem, doesn't look to be soldered at all. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, that's a nice board. Love those little uh, cold cathode high voltage transformers. Oh, they're darling. Those will be put in projects. Some of these MOSFETs too are really good, so I uh, recommend saving those as well. That's a nice board. I like it. So far the best part of this TV is uh, the CCFL inverter. That's uh, one of my favorite boards. Let's take a look at the miscellaneous components from the TV and then get to the other side. Miscellaneous parts from this TV include a little remote pickup power on indicator board. A uh, very similar switch module which has a few switches on there and then uh, same thing the resistors functions the exact same way as described earlier with the uh, insignia got uh, two more terrible speakers and uh, lastly but not leastly the kind of LVDS cable that your mother warns you about yeah these are wonderful cables look at all that color good project wire yeah, look inside the panel, see what is waiting for us in there. Before I take apart this LCD panel, there's one thing I want to note. The nice thing about the cold cathode fluorescent displays is uh, they're built a little bit more ruggedly. So they have a nice frame that goes all the way around them. And if you can save one of these frames, they make excellent project hosts for like your own different light setups and stuff like that. So. All you have to do is basically put whatever LEDs or whatnot you want in there to light up and it uh, makes a great little frame for it. Take a look. It's all metal. Don't have to worry about it. Nice back. Nice front. Perfect. Put lights in these. You know, I don't actually know if this screen is cracked. But uh, there is one other problem. It seems to be glued in the plastic. So, let's crack it. That's a tough screen. Man, that's a tough screen. I approve. Too bad it's uh, outdated. It's a nice tough screen. And uh, here we have... Uh, same layers should have a couple of uh, diffraction layers and uh, then that uh, same piece of plastic in the back. So we're gonna get to that. Got some uh, clips on the side. Nice clips on the side. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Come on. This is why I like Sanyo. Good brand. Durable brand. 
Carnage. Mm, now destroyed. Oh, there's always more screws. Hey, look, I can't believe it's not a TCOM board. And uh, now we have access to those layers. Wow, that's a little yellowed. Oh, that's no good. It's just a uh, just a diffuser. Well, that's that's not satisfying as an optical technician. Oh, that that is nice. So these are uh, the refraction ingredient. Is there only one? Is it one or two? Maybe it is only one. But well, that is a nice one. Oh yeah. That is a nice one. Good, I love that. Love these things. Great things. Hang these up on your wall. Hang them up on a poster. Watch people wipe their eyes because they think they're losing their vision. That stuff's fun. And uh there we go. And now we get into the internal goodies. Another diffuser that just fell. And uh, same white piece of uh, may making a mess of this. Same uh, hard piece of plastic. I don't care. Look, fluorescent bulbs. Don't care. Let's get these out so I can put something else in here. Plastic is gone. You be able to do that. Oh, that's nice. more Sanyo quality. Look at that, they all just slide right out. Love it. No desoldering at all. Look at that. Very nice. Alright, well, uh, that was fun. Next TV. The next TV is a 42 inch LG. Uh, this one I found out by the neighbors and uh, I thought it had a couple of bad capacitors. But uh, in talking with them, it uh, sounds like there are vertical lines going up and down on the screen. Which means that uh, some of the little uh, control chips alongside of the screen probably went bad and this TV is not fixable. That, and it came from the house of a few chain smokers, so it definitely has that special 80s smell to it. We got a couple of uh, different boards here. Got a, another Logic board right here, pretty similar layout as the other ones, and they're all pretty much the same thing, really, once you get inside of them. And then a uh, big old power supply, as well as the CCFL inverter board right here. I'm going to take out these boards, and uh, we'll take a good look at them, but as I said, pretty much the same thing. And now uh, we'll get inside of the actual panel itself. Would you take a look at how dirty that power supply board is? Ha, uh, that was a dirty TV. Let's take a look at the board a little bit more. We got the live and neutral. Once again, no third pin for ground. So uh, we got a fuse here, metal oxide resistor there, and a fusible resistor in here. Also got a little uh, bleeder resistor as a high value resistor across the live and neutral just to make sure there's no uh, stored up voltage. Two class X capacitors. 
Now this right here is just a high frequency uh, filter and it's a single loop and it helps do things like uh, eat up the noise coming off the high voltage cold cathode inverter. Had a, a common mode choke right here and uh, that's it for the AC filtering. On the bottom of the board there's also some uh, very high voltage spark gaps and this is just for like uh, a major electrical short on the high voltage side or for like lightning strikes. So what it does is uh, the electricity would jump from uh, these points to these points across on the board. Now they call it a spark gap. So from the AC filtering side it goes to this full bridge rectifier here and uh, that takes the AC converts it over to DC which charges up this capacitor here. Now there's also another uh, thin film capacitor here and uh, this capacitor can do AC and DC but its function here is uh, just to help smooth out the fluctuations going to this large electrolytic capacitor here. Um, sometimes the uh, wave that comes off the full bridge rectifier even though it's uh, DC it can still have pretty harsh spikes on it and uh, it just helps this capacitor handle that. You have two metal oxide resistors here and uh, this is where it gets a little confusing for me but uh, I'll try to explain what I think is going on. In this section here we have uh, two diodes and what looks to be two MOSFETs. So this would be the MOSFET here and uh, this would be the MOSFET here and uh, this would be a diode and this would be a diode. These are labeled L so I'm suspecting they're inductors. So if I look on the back of the power supply, we can see that uh, the AC goes through these two points right here, travels up and it looks like it goes into those two inductors. Now there's a loop on those inductors too and uh, that loop feeds the signal through these wires over and into this IC. So it's either a magnetically reactive controlled pair of inductors on the line or it's like a smart inductor whatnot. Not quite sure exactly what those two inductors are for. If anybody knows, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. On the bottom here we have the main switch mode drive IC and this basically controls all the switching and stuff on the board. And uh, back to the other side. So once again from the large capacitor that energy gets switched by a couple of MOSFETs. There's one MOSFET here and there's a pair of MOSFETs here. So these two MOSFETs handle the switching of this larger transformer here and the AC that comes off this transformer goes through these four diodes here. Now normally they would go into the uh, tank uh, smoothing capacitors but those are already removed. So uh, this transformer and uh, these diodes and stuff handle the voltage going to the uh, CCFL inverter. So this is a, the 24 volt uh, output for that. From there we have uh, another transformer that's also powered by the large capacitor and uh, this is just for the other devices on the logic board. So uh, what happens is the AC goes from here uh, into these diodes right here and uh, then stores up the DC in these capacitors. We also have a, another switching component here. Not quite sure what that switch is myself, but it could be anything on the logic board, such as a sound or another device. And uh, then the headers here. We also got the uh, little uh, photocouplers here, optocouplers, and uh, they control the switching feedback from the low side of the power supply to the uh, chip on the other side, and it basically controls when uh, all of these magnetic components are running. So yeah, pretty simple and uh, standard layout still for a power supply. Here's a logic board from the 42 inch LG and uh, let's take a look and see what's on this board. So main power input comes from here and uh, it's right next to these large capacitors which do a lot of smoothing for the power coming from the PSU. Here's the uh, header and uh, this header goes out to the little buttons on the side for controlling the TV and the remote pickup and such like that. Probably uh, power regulating components because they're by uh, all these capacitors and uh, it looks like we have our little digital amplifier IC right there until it's uh, right by those inductors and little inductor pairs 
and it's right by the speaker output. So uh, I think this is the uh, HDMI decoder chip and I think that because it's by the HDMI ports and comes up pretty much directly from those and it also looks to handle the VGA as well. Not quite sure what those are but uh, this looks like a another voltage regulator of some sort. And up here we have uh, the main CPU. This basically controls all of the on-screen graphics and uh, the user interface. Little uh, oscillating quartz crystal here and uh, two either RAM chips or flash chips, probably uh, RAM. Uh, more power regulating components up here. Not quite sure what this is. Ah, uh, a little button. I know exactly what that is. And these, yeah, other power management components too. This is the uh, RF pickup, and uh, that was where the coaxial cable goes in, and uh, just a couple of other miscellaneous ports. Not much on the bottom, it looks like, so I think that's uh, off of this board. And now, once again, it's time for my favorite part that comes out of a cold cathode fluorescent backlit LCD display, and that is, of course, the CCFL inverter board. So I've already previously been in this a while back, and uh, I pulled out the capacitors because they were bloated, so they need to be replaced. Once they're replaced, it should work as normal. So basically, pretty simple. We got the uh, main control IC, and uh, this does things like handle whether the inverter board is on, it handles the PWM frequency and brightness control of the backlight, and it also handles the frequency uh, that's being fed to this uh, H-bridge drive right here. And uh, what these four MOSFETs do when they're in this configuration is say uh, you want to feed power to a transformer. You can uh, feed it just a positive pulse and uh, then off and a positive pulse or you can feed it a positive, negative, positive, negative swing. And uh, this is what these four do. We got a couple of coupling capacitors right here and uh, what they do is they allow for the switched AC from this H-bridge drive to go to the transformers. These transformers all run in parallel. Now the other reason for the coupling capacitors is that in this configuration uh, they will only allow AC to pass. So if there is ever a problem with these MOSFETs and one of them goes short circuit, it won't pass the current on through the transformers, which is good. So yeah, pretty beasty cold cathode fluorescent inverter. And this right here is the TCOM board from the LG 42 inch TV. Yep, TCOM board. Other miscellaneous parts from the 42 inch LG include the little switch module which is attached to the board that handles the uh, remote control pickup and uh, I think there's little LEDs underneath here for power on indicator so go ahead and find that out. Oh yeah, quite a few bit of uh, LEDs in there. Nice. Let's see what else. Have uh, two pretty four speakers. Yeah, uh, not the greatest, and uh, some wonderful LVDS cable. One other thing to note from the 42-inch LG is uh, has these little uh, tweeters right here, and these are for dealing with the really high-frequency treble sounds. And uh, it'd be great to pull off, except they are glued down to the actual front of the TV frame. So they vibrate this uh, material. See if I can uh, get one of these off without damaging it. I've already destroyed the other one and they're decently glued on. Let's see what happens. Well, that ain't tweeting no more. Well, may as well get the speaker and the bipolar capacitor. Why? Who did this? And now for the last part of the 42 inch LG, the actual panel itself. Let's take that apart. Uh, ah, that's so dirty. That all needs cleaning. Ugh. Oh, remove these uh, brackets around the outside of the screen. And 
and uh, here we go. So, got the uh, little on chip controllers around the outside. Or uh, on film, yeah, on film controllers. Little chips here. And, uh, hey, there's a clean surface. I didn't expect to find that in this TV. Uh, more little uh, clips around the edge that I'm going to need to undo. Lots of them. Oh, really a fragile plastic. Because of uh, the heat. They don't build uh, TVs like this anymore, that's for sure. Probably a good thing too. Yeah, this this is just totaled. Wow. Yeah, that plastic is so brittle. That's uh, not usable anymore, is it? Well, at least you can see the inner wall. <laughs> that's, that's majorly yellowed in there. Oh, wow. It looks like uh, just two pieces of material. They're both uh, diffusing materials, so it doesn't seem to be any refracting films inside of here. Yep, just the two diffusers, and an uh, incredibly yellowed piece of uh, what used to be white plastic on the inside. I was wrong. No safe surface in this TV. God, it's filthy. Dirty, dirty, dirty. I don't even know if I want to touch this anymore. I, I don't want to touch this anymore. Let's get to the plasma screen. This is some of the most brittle plastic I've ever taken out of a TV. Look at this. <laughs> Incredible. The next screen we have is a 42 inch plasma screen from Panasonic. And I'll tell you right now, I do not know the same amount about plasma screens as I do about LCD screens simply because uh, when the plasma screens break, there's really no uh, LEDs or any other parts inside of which I, I have too much interest in, but still some interesting stuff going on. There's another uh, TV with a broken panel, so absolutely nothing in here lights up except for the LED indicator telling you that there's power. Uh, here's the main power supply board. So we got a logic board right here. Uh, this board right here is the Y sustain board and what this board does is it uh, keeps a reference of what the image is supposed to be uh, on the screen for the uh, Y lines. And then uh, we have the uh, X sustain board here. It also I believe has these uh, grounding straps and then uh, that talks to the lower uh, X buffer here. And this Y sustain board talks to these two Y buffers. and. Uh, this Y buffer right here takes care of the uh, upper portion of the screen. This takes care of the lower portion of the screen. So this controls uh, the electrodes going this way. And uh, this controls the electrodes going this way. Of course, because it's multiplexed, wherever those electrodes meet uh, is where you're going to get the discharge. But it needs the buffer boards because just like any other multiplexing display, it needs to be able to switch on and off the pixels to give you a complete image. So I'm going to tear this down and then we can go over some of the boards but as I said I don't know the same amount so I'm not going to be able to tell you exactly uh, what a lot of these uh, components do. Sadly I just plasma screens aren't something that really has ever interested me so it's kind of where I'm at. Let's tear it down. 
Looks also like uh, this transformer has a thermistor on it, so it might also be able to detect how warm some of the magnetic components are getting. This appears to be the high voltage side, so this would be what provides the 150 to 250 volts to the uh, rest of the high voltage sections. Right here, it got the uh, X sustain board, and it looks like there are some grounding points on that board. More uh, high voltage components here, the high voltage uh, thin film capacitors and some fairly high voltage electrolytics up on the top. And here on the bottom, we got a, a little port for connecting speakers. This uh, screen actually has no speakers in of itself. I kind of think that's interesting. I we'll talk about that on a different TV in a different video. Uh, underneath that, we have a X buffer board, and uh, it looks like the X buffer board is directly connected to the uh, logic board with these two ribbon cables. So, yeah. From there, we have the uh, Y sustain board right here, more high voltage components as well. And uh, on the other side, a bunch of uh, diodes and uh, could be transistors. I haven't looked up the part numbers. And uh, then the two Y buffer boards. So, this is for the top half of the screen, and this is for the bottom half of the screen. On the other side, we're going to find ICs that are most likely potted in like uh, silicone. Another speaker output. Uh, and uh, the last thing is the input boards. So it looks like we have some uh, inputs for the audio, uh, left and right speakers, and uh, some what PNC connectors. I think that's what those are called. Like coaxials. Uh, VGA input and uh, a serial input, surprisingly enough. So, tells you about the kind of era this TV really came from. 2005, before uh, TVs came with a USB and all sorts of other fancy smart TV electronics inside. Anyway, let's get to tearing these boards out and we're going to take a look at them in a little bit more detail. Alright, let's take a look at the Panasonic Plasma Power Supply Board. So, we got the live and neutral here and each one of those has a fuse. After that we get a positive temperature coefficient thermistor and I think there's another one right here. Here and here look to be the class X capacitors. We got two common mode chokes as well. And if you look in the corner there's two little neon bulbs and these act like spark gaps. So if there's a high voltage spike it takes and excites the gas in these two little lamps and it converts it over to light and discharges at uh, high voltage spike. Here's two class Y capacitors and two relays and the relays allow for the power supply to be cut from the AC if there's a problem with it. From there there are three inrush current limiting resistors so these are a low value resistor um, high wattage and what they do is when uh, some of the components like the capacitors here and uh, here draw power when you plug in the TV. Uh, these limit the amount of current until they're fully charged. Got uh, two bridge rectifiers, one bridge rectifier here and there's another bridge rectifier here. This bridge rectifier uh, charges these capacitors in here and uh, this bridge rectifier here charges up this uh, bigger capacitor here. The capacitor underneath this heat sink is switched by a MOSFET on this heat sink and uh, that's the primary side that is uh, switched and a couple of secondary taps. The secondary taps put out a couple of different AC voltage rails and those are converted to DC by these diodes here and stored in these capacitors for various outputs to the logic board. And uh, for the higher voltage side we have uh, this big capacitor here which is switched by a MOSFET in between these heat sinks and uh, it switches these transformers and uh, these transformers provide the high voltage for things like the X and Y sustain board and stuff. We got the, these big capacitors here and uh, this is for the 200 or so volts that runs the actual plasma display and their output is, is here. So that would probably make this a step up transformer and this is a step down transformer. So lower voltage and this one takes and makes it higher voltage. 
Looks like uh, this transformer here is also switched by uh, this MOSFET and we have a diode here. So that takes and uh, charges up these. So probably gives us a 60 volt rail for some of the components on the inside. Let's see what the capacitors say. 160 volts, yeah. Seems like the lower high voltage side of things. So not all too much going on on this power supply. Pretty standard indeed. After a few minutes of Google research and looking over these boards in a little bit more detail, I think I have an understanding of how they work. If not, I'll be providing some comic relief for plasma screen technicians. Let's firstly take a look at this board right here. So this board is uh, the return path for the high voltage and uh, it's connected to a bunch of horizontal lines that uh, are conductive pathways and they all share the same plane. So they're all connected together pretty much. Uh, this also controls horizontal conductors on the screen and uh, this one is a little bit more specialized. It can control each individual horizontal uh, line. So we're going to take a look at the bottom and there's these chips here and they're silicone potted because they have to they have to work with high voltage and you want to keep all the moisture from getting in underneath the chip and stuff like that so just some high voltage insulation uh, prevention of moisture this board pretty much handles the high voltage switching and the uh, the PWM frequencies and stuff like the brightness of the actual display whereas these chips control the actual uh, lines so there are data line inputs here and uh, these chips take and uh, put out each individual line control command so these are all out and these are all in you have to take and treat each one of these is like uh, an anode and then this is uh, a return cathode let's uh, do a little illustration of how that actually works so let's draw the connections from this first and all these connections as I said are tied together so we're going to draw one big interconnected plane and a set of horizontal lines that go across. So those horizontal connections are like this. Now uh, this board independently controls the voltage going to those horizontal lines. And so on the other side of the uh, pixel area there is for each uh, row another horizontal conductive pathway and between those pathways there's an insulation barrier so uh, to prevent discharge from this area and this area and uh, allowing the plasma to go across the wider gap there's a little uh, insulating barrier that just goes between those lines like this and that prevents uh, the electrical discharge from happening uh, between those closer lines so the discharge takes place in the wider section you got the uh, red green blue red green blue pixels going this way the discharge between these two points can be controlled with a lower voltage much like a vacuum fluorescent display uh, so the flow of electrons uh, can be changed by the amount of voltage present on the vertical control wires and those vertical control wires uh, in the screen are connected to these two lower buffer boards or line driver boards and each one of them are controlled by a chip as well. These boards are directly connected to the IC on the main uh, display driving board and uh, we can see here where it links up. So, a relatively low voltage signal gets fed from this chip to these two outputs, and each one of these outputs goes to one of the uh, X control wires. And those wires are located underneath here. So, I'm going to take and uh, draw those wires. And those wires are uh, vertical. So, they're drawn like this. And each pixel would have one of these wires for each color, red, green, and blue. So, these wires lay underneath, 
and what they do is uh, depending on the charge of those wires it will allow plasma to discharge between the anode and the cathode of the high voltage signal or it will keep it dark and thus giving you a black pixel so that's kind of how the plasma displays work not all too complicated but just complicated enough to be a little confusing I hope this has helped your understanding on how the plasma displays work let's go over the X and the Y sustain boards a little bit more in detail these boards share some identical components with one another so first thing to note these two large power MOSFETs here and on this board here and then three diodes so same three diodes here there are six transistors on each board and five of those transistors are controlled by another transistor and I think they use transistors in this case because they're a little bit more precise and a little quicker to respond and probably have a lot to do with the screen PWM brightness not quite sure not a plasma TV technician I also believe that this operates on AC not DC so the vacuum fluorescent analogy isn't exactly correct but the uh, control wires going vertically won't really care uh, instead of using free electrons that hit a fluorescent material what they do is they generate a plasma and it's a high frequency AC plasma and I believe that because of these inductors and switching components so if this board is negative then this board is positive and if this board is negative then this board is positive and they switch back and forth to create the plasma there are some uh, other power MOSFETs here and to be honest I'm not sure exactly what those are for but I believe they have a lot to do with the AC switching as well these two boards right here are the X buffer boards or the vertical line driving boards and they control the amount of voltage going to the vertical conductors in the actual plasma display itself both of those are connected to the primary image processing board through ribbon cables that go here to here and from here to here and they get their signal from this IC right here the horizontal control information is generated by this processor and each one of these processors has its associated memory with it so memory chip here memory chip here memory chip here and memory chip here one of these possibly being a flash memory for the on-screen user displayed information which I believe is handled also by this IC now these ports right here go to the secondary uh, inputs and peripherals board and these chips right here help interface the primary display processing board to that other board let's go take a look at that one this board right here is the inputs and peripherals board and it has a couple of boards on it let's take a look at this board first so this board handles the serial in the headphones out and the VGA in and it also looks like there is a little IC here for amplifying the output signal to the headphones this board right here is the analog BNC in and the RCA audio input although uh, looking at this side of the board it doesn't look to be populated on the video input signal side so you probably wouldn't like the image you got when trying to use these connections Uh, given what's connected to this card slot right here this chip is probably for converting the analog video inputs into a more usable uh, input signal for the video controller board and uh, over here we have the audio amplifier section for the speaker outputs so each one of these handles uh, either the left or right audio channel and uh, you can see some of the inductors and capacitors that are associated with that one of the speaker outputs is here and one of the speaker outputs is here these other connectors simply connect to the uh, main video display card now, I'm not sure what this card port is for but it looks to be a some kind of an audio expansion given that this looks like an audio amplifier IC of some sort uh, this is probably another video decoder although as I said I'm not quite sure what it's for so not all too much going on this board in general I uh, 
think it's time to look at the other smaller components from the plasma screen. Little bits from the plasma screen include the AC input, which has the common mode choke and class X and Y capacitors already built into it for noise suppression. We have another switchboard module that works exactly the same way as the other ones do. Another remote control pickup board that has the power indicating LEDs on it. A pair of speaker terminals, which will be really handy in other projects. Pretty sure that I'll use these in something. A real switch. This isn't something that you find in a flat panel display often, and is definitely useful. And a whole bunch of wires of different lengths and sizes with different connectors on them, which are definitely always handy if you're making your own projects. And now, time for something completely different, a flat screen TV. This one is a 70 inch LED backlit Vizio. Let's get inside and see what makes it tick. Separate. Well, that was harder than expected. Let's take a look at the power supply board from the 70 inch Vizio. And by now there's a lot of components of which you should be able to identify. So we have the live and neutral here, a PTC here, and we have a fuse here. There's a couple of class X capacitors here and a couple of class Y capacitors there. Another PTC is right here and we have a couple of diodes. Now, from the uh, AC filtering side of the power supply board, everything goes to the full bridge rectifier. And so the AC comes in here and the DC comes out of these two leads. You can see the full bridge rectifier underneath that heatsink. From there, the rectified voltage, which is DC, goes and charges up these two capacitors. And then the power that's stored in these gets switched by a few MOSFETs. So there's a MOSFET underneath this heatsink, a MOSFET underneath this heatsink, and two more underneath this heatsink. What they do is they take and they switch the power to the high side of each transformer, which is the primary, and they step down the voltage. And that gives us different voltage rails for the components on the logic board. The voltage coming off the transformers is AC, so it needs to be rectified. Here's one of the diodes for that, and that charges up these capacitors. And then this also has diodes underneath it, which charges up these capacitors. And uh, this all goes to the logic board, and this section is for driving the LEDs. We got a couple of optocouplers as well, and those do all the feedback to the little ICs that control the switch mode timing. Here's the main IC right here, and a couple of smaller switch mode ICs as well. Well, all in all, also a pretty simple power supply board. Sorry everyone, there's just not a lot to look at on this logic board, but let's do it anyway. It looks like here there's a custom ARM processor, which probably runs some sort of TV OS, and then some RAM chips to go with it. Looks like here we have a flash chip, which probably has something like the BIOS information or uh, whatnot on it. And then here's the audio chip, which uh, is indicated by the four little inductors here, and the speaker output. There's also the LVDS header here, which connects directly to this uh, microcontroller. And uh, what looks to be a couple of step-down converters 
for conditioning the power that comes in from the power supply. Now this is the power for the LEDs themselves and it goes over to here in this section and it looks like there is a custom IC that is designed for a current regulating all the LED sets. I think that because there's a little resistor here next to some of the MOSFETs and I think those are current shunts for detecting how much current is going out of each MOSFET and to each string of LEDs. There's also a, a little Wi-Fi card on here and uh, yeah not all too much on the board. Uh, little inline uh, inductor filter uh, for the uh, networking. Yeah. That's about it. This is the TCOM board from the 70 inch LCD and uh, it does the same thing as the other ones do. It uh, takes and conditions the voltage and does some of the signal decoding for the data that goes out to the LCD panel. Not too much on this board either. Here are the smaller parts from the Vizio 70 inch LCD. A little switch module with the remote pickup and the power LED indicator. The wires that go from the power supply to the logic board. An AC plug with matching cord to go with it. That is always useful to have as well. And some speakers that sound as funny as they look. More about that on another video. Time to get to all the LEDs inside of the 70 inch Vizio. Uh, this is my favorite part, the whole deal. So, remove the cracked LCD. More layers. Get rid of those. Like we got a diffuser, the X and Y refracting films, and uh, then a whiteboard behind it. it. Looks to have a cool honeycomb pattern on it. That's interesting. Up your heathen. And a moment of reveal. sense disaster happening. much harder with the TV being bigger than I am. Jesus. Well that was also more difficult than expected. Let's hope this practice helps with the next big screen. Look at all those LEDs. Yeah, probably going to be a bunch of strips. I have to undo all those and then pull the LED strips out and we can see what we have. The last parts from the Vizio LCD, of course, are the LED strips and there's a total of 12 of them. Each one of these strips has 6 LEDs, giving us a total of 72 LEDs for all of them and these strips run pretty well on 20 volts. So that's nice, so work pretty well with a uh, laptop power supply. Take a look at the uh, LED brightness. I'd say those will do really nicely. 
this right here is the last TV that I'll be taking apart for this video, which is a precariously perched sharp 70 inch Aquas, which is another LED backlit LCD TV. You know the drill, so I'm gonna take the back cover off and hope it doesn't fall over and crush me. Well, that went a lot better than the uh, other one, didn't it? Pretty clean. Well, we got a logic board, a TCOM board, and a power supply. But you already knew that already, right? Learning is fun. Time to take a look at the power supply board from the 70 inch sharp LCD TV. But first, there's a correction of which I have to make. Earlier in the video, I called some of these components say positive temperature coefficient thermistor. They're not, they're negative temperature coefficient thermistors. And they do the same thing as I said before, they get less conductive when they heat up. I'm just so very used to saying positive temperature coefficient because a lot of the components of which I work with, like LEDs and laser diodes, have the positive temperature coefficient characteristics. And that just means that they get more conductive as they heat up instead of getting less conductive. Just a silly human saying silly human things. And my apologies on that. We have uh, the AC input here with the live and neutral, a fuse on live, and a metal oxide barrister or negative temperature coefficient thermistor. Uh, either a common mode choke or some kind of uh, filter, a common mode choke, and another common mode choke here, a couple of class X capacitors, a couple of class Y capacitors, and some miscellaneous filtering uh, little components there. Now like all the other power supplies, the AC goes into a full bridge rectifier and that takes and turns the AC into DC and that DC gets sent through these components here and charge up these capacitors. Now, earlier in the video, I said uh, something about one of the power supply boards having a strange inductor of which I didn't know what it really did. And this power supply seems to have another similar sort of inductor. So what I think it is for is the auto selecting feature for the power supply. So it seems like we have a voltage doubler of sorts. And uh, what this uh, circuit does is it allows the power supply to either use 120 volts or 240 volts AC. So that's what I think those other inductors are for. Anyway, uh, the power from the capacitors is switched with a couple of MOSFETs. The MOSFETs are underneath here and they switch the primary side of this transformer here. And we can see the primary coil windings on the bottom and where the power comes in and a couple of voltage taps for uh, the secondary windings on the transformer. So this transformer sends uh, either stepped up or stepped down AC out to various different taps and uh, one of the taps which is a higher voltage tap goes to the LEDs. So the uh, AC that's stepped up gets rectified by these shot key diodes here and then charges up some of these capacitors here, which provides the power for the LEDs. Now it looks to seem like we have an inductor here and a few current regulating resistors here. So I'm betting there's also uh, feedback detection and it uses this inductor to regulate the amount of current that's coming from the capacitors here. Not quite sure, but it sure as heck looks like it. And then uh, we've got a couple of diodes underneath these heat sinks. And what they do is they take uh, some of the AC voltage coming from the transformer and other various secondary voltage rails. And they convert that AC into DC and then charge up some of these capacitors here for the various power rails that go out to the logic board. There's also another really interesting thing on the power supply board, and you'll see this pretty often, is a, another smaller transformer, and it's tied to this IC right here. And this IC actually takes care of everything. Not only does it do the switching, but it also handles the, uh, the power side of the switching as well. So one component for the power supply, uh, what it is is uh, the standby voltage for the power supply. So 
it provides the always on 3.3 volt or the 5.5 volt uh, rail on the power supply. A couple of uh, photocouplers as well and those send the signal from the low side of the power supply to the uh, little ICs on the bottom of the board, a switch mode uh, power control ICs and uh, it's just the feedback from the low side to those processors that control the power supply. But yeah, not quite a lot going on on this board. Looks pretty complicated, probably is pretty complicated, but seems like a pretty standard layout. Here's the logic board from a 70 inch sharp LCD TV and there's hardly anything on it. So here's the power supply input and a few step down converters and other power regulating ICs. From there it goes to a little microcontroller which looks to be manufactured by Realtek and that has its associated memory chip here. This is the audio amplifier IC and it's by four inductors and goes out to the speakers. Now this connection is for the little Wi-Fi card inside of the TV. Pretty much everything from there is also connected to the microcontroller, the LVDS going out to the TCOM board, the button module and remote control pickup, DTS, couple of HDMI ports, VGA port, headphones, uh, the cable coaxial input, and a couple of USBs, all these uh, actually HDMI. Yeah, nothing pretty much on this board though. Once again, we have a TCOM board, this one from the 70 inch Sharp. Only difference with this one being that it gets most of its power directly from the power supply board through this connector. Otherwise, it pretty much does the exact same thing. It does some signal processing from the LVDS before it goes out to the actual LCD panel itself and some voltage regulating and other power conditioning components over here for the power rails and stuff that go out to the LCD panel. Otherwise, there really isn't much on this board. Miscellaneous components from the 70 inch Sharp include a little push button module, a small Wi-Fi transmitter receiver, This little board right here, which uh, does the remote control pickup and the power on indicator. It also has a little ambient light sensor right here in the front. A bunch of wires. And a pair of speakers that don't sound half bad. Yeah, more like 70% bad. It's time to rescue a few more orphan LEDs. Let's get inside the screen and see what we have. myself in the head in the process of doing that. This is going easier than the other TV. Looks like I am learning too. Uh, now for the LCD. And I uh, should have a couple of layers in here. Got some tape around the uh, clips. Well, I need to undo hate tape. So annoying. Yeah, much nicer than the other one. Error input malfunction. All right, got a uh, an uh, X and Y refractor. Got X refractor. This? No Y. Uh, and it uh, looks like just a diffuser. Cool. And the moment of reveal is a 
underneath here. Best thing about tear down stuff is that you don't have to worry about fixing it. You just kind of uh, naturally let it break at its weakest point. All right, it's time for some LEDs. Got a clear piece of plastic. Looks like a, a diffuser or a light spreader panel. Yeah. And uh, that. Some of you may be confused, but don't be. Where are the LEDs, may you ask? They're all down in there. Here are all the LEDs that were pulled from the 70 inch sharp flat screen and as you can see there are quite a lot of them mounted on this aluminum backing which serves as a heat sink to keep all the LEDs cool when running. I don't necessarily have a power supply to turn these all on but I know what did and that's the TV. So we're just going to go ahead and use that. Check out how bright these LEDs are. On. Yeah, not too bad at all. I think that's a winner. Well, that was a lot of work. I think I tore down nearly a literal ton of TVs. So it's time to wrap up the video. However, before I do that, I want to give you guys a little glimpse into a long-term project of which I'm working on, and that's my own hi-fi sound system. Now I know it seems like I really hate speakers from TVs. The truth of the matter is, I really hate speakers from new TVs. And to demonstrate that, I have one of the speakers from the 70 inch Sharp and a speaker from like a 1995 or so ish rear projection CRT TV. I'm just gonna play some music. Both speakers are connected to this little 5 volt amp and you can make your own decision from there whether new or old is better. So let's start with new, see how new so uh, sounds. with that myself. Let's see how old school sounds. about you guys but I have made my choice. I think that's really all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and as always stay tuned for more.